so this is the common SMPS circuit and I wanted to see how it works so I created this exploded view of the S this SMPS circuit such that I can understand the function of each individual components so let us see and understand so overall in this circuit the AC current first enters through this NTC 10D which uh, protects it from uh, input surge current then it goes through the bridge rectifier bridge rectifier converts AC to DC that DC sig uh, signal or DC current gets filtered out by this RC filter then it goes through this snubber circuit which protects the diode and also the MOSFET which is used for switching so after it uh, gets uh, through this transformer uh, it goes through this power MOSFET or SMPS uh, IC which consists of a PWM signal generator and a uh, MOSFET so what it does is that it converts the AC uh, converts the DC to AC current at a uh, frequency of 60 kilohertz so the DC uh, DC current becomes AC current once again uh, in a format of a square wave and then goes through this transformer to the secondary side now to power this uh, MOSFET in the uh, there is a auxiliary winding this auxiliary winding produces a voltage uh, uh, below 40 volts and that uh, AC voltage is actually filtered out through this capacitor and there is also a diode which converts the AC to DC and then it gets filtered out through this capacitor and then goes to this IC which and it powers the IC now the IC needs feedback to understand what is the output voltage in this uh, secondary side for that feedback uh, our octocoupler is used because we need to isolate the primary side and the secondary side or else uh, there will be signal noises which will travel from the primary to the secondary and there may be a chance of electrocution too so in the secondary side there is a Schottky barrier diode which converts that high frequency AC signal to DC signal then this capacitor again is used to filter out and uh, then there is a Zener diode which uh, monitors the output voltage from the secondary that Zener diode is connected through this octocoupler and this octocoupler consists of a LED and also a phototransistor and this phototransistor amount of current which flows through the uh, phototransistor is dependent on the brightness of the LED so uh, this phototransistor actually control uh, gives feedback to this uh, IC which controls the width of the P PWM signal PWM, PWM means pulse wide modulation that's it about the whole SMPS circuit now in the very good SMPS circuit there are more filters there are active filters passive filters and it goes on and on even in the secondary side there is inductor primary side there is inductor there is differential mode inductor common mode inductor and so more the pricier the circuit more complex it is and more uh, it gives a filter DC output now to understand this IC needs to understand that how much voltage is being generated in the secondary side so it needs a feedback which is which you can see through with the black wire through the black wire it gets a feedback but the second thing is that this IC or this primary side needs to be isolated from this secondary side so if it is not isolated then the AC component can move to the secondary side and you can get electrocuted to isolate this octocoupler is used this octocoupler or a photocoupler or optical isolator consists of an LED and also a phototransistor the brighter the LED the more current will flow from collector to the emitter side so how it works how this feedback works so these two wires come from this output and it goes through through a resistance to this pin of the of this octocoupler IC so the LED cathode part is connected through another resistance through this uh, Zener diode 5 volt Zener diode to the ground so what happens is that when the voltage reaches excess amount from the 5 volt amount so when the voltage output voltage is more than the 5 volt then this LED of the optocoupler glows then the current from the uh, collector side to the emitter side of this phototransistor flows more and hence it gets a feedback so it reduces the width of a PWM signal
So this is a Zener diode. We know that diode is one way current passes in one direction only. But Zener diode can allow current to pass in the reverse direction if a certain set reverse voltage is there. So this is a 5 volt uh, Zener diode. So after the current through this reaches 5 volt it will start conducting backward. So this Zener diode is actually used for regulation of voltage. So we need to understand that why this Kotke barrier diode, this capacitor filter is given. So here is a small DSO which is called digital storage oscilloscope. So you can see the waveform at the output of the secondary of the transformer is this. So right now I will just unhold and you can see this is the waveform at the output. So let us change the time period. So can you see this is the amount of noises which we get at the output just after the transformer. This is due to the PWM signal modulation which is used to convert the DC back to AC such that the transformer can step down the voltage. Now we will see what is the waveform across the capacitor whether there is any noises or not. Here you can see the waveform. It has little bit of noises but it won't affect our uh, microcontroller because it ranges from 4.8 to 5.07 and uh, so these are its parameters so this is my SMPS circuit now another thing to see what happens if I switch off this SMPS circuit whether it will create any spike or not let us see and what happens if I switch it on let us see This is a SMPS circuit which is malfunctioning. The resistance which is supplying the feedback voltage from the secondary of the transformer to the LED of the optocoupler is actually less. And because the value of resistance is less, then uh, for a small amount of voltage in the secondary, it is telling the IC that it has reached 5 volt. This is because of the wrong resistance which is attached. So here you can see the waveform. If you like the video please subscribe Nayar. Please subscribe and press the bell icon. Thank you that's for today.